Welcome to Magnificent Medical Lectures and the topic to be discussed here is the gross anatomy of the arm. Um, the arm is that portion of the upper limb from the shoulder to the elbow. It is made of the humerus, which is the bone of the arm, muscles, neurovascular bundles, and of course, the skin overlying it. Now we will look at these parts one after the other. The arm has a bone called the humerus. This is a long bone which has region for it in parts. First, what you are seeing here is the proximal parts of the left humerus, both on the posterior and anterior views. The areas in this region include the head, which is spherical and attaches to the glenoid cavity at the shoulder joint. The anatomical neck, which is a groove surrounding the head of the humerus. This also separates the head of the humerus from the greater and lesser tubercles. Also in this region is found the surgical neck. This is distal to the head of the humerus and the tubercles. It is a common site of fracture of this bone. At the lateral margin is a greater tubercle and projecting anteriorly is the lesser tubercle. Separating these tubercles is a groove, the intertubercular groove. On the next region of this bone is the shaft of the body. On its lateral side, it has a delta tuberosity and posteriorly a radial groove. Um, at the same level, a nutrient foramen is seen too. Lastly, the distal part of this bone has a more prominent medial epicondyle and a lateral epicondyle. Still seen in this diagram, is a posterior view and anterior views of the left humerus. On the posterior view is a depression, the holocranon fossa, and a pulley like structure, the trochlea. On the anterior view also is a trochlea, plus two depressions, which are the coronoid fossa anteriorly and a radial fossa anterior laterally. The capitalon is seen lateral to the trochlea. Now we we'll look at the muscles of this region. Normally, this is studied better, dividing the arms into anterior compartment and posterior compartment. Looking at the anterior compartment of the arm, on this diagram is the biceps brachii muscle seen in the arm region. This muscle has two heads the short head, which is medially placed, originates from the coracoid process of the scapula, while the long head, laterally placed, originates from the supraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. The muscle then inserts on the radial tuberosity in the forearm region. This muscle is innervated by musculocutaneous nerve C5, C6, and C7, and functions in supination and flexion of forearm. Although this muscle is found in the arm region, its basic action is on the forearm. The second muscle is the brachialis. This muscle lies deep to the biceps brachii. This muscle originates from the distal half surface of the humerus and starts on the tuberosity of the ulna. It is innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve C5 and C6 and also the radial nerve C5 and C7. The action of this muscle is the flexion at the elbow joint. Another muscle on this compartment is the coracobrachialis. As the name implies, it originates from the coracoid process of the scapula and inserts on the medial surface of the humerus. This muscle is inverted by musculocutaneous nerve C5, C6, and C7 and its functions in arm flexion and adduction. Looking at the posterior compartment, the triceps muscle is seen having three heads. The lateral head originates from the posterior surface of the humerus superior to the radial groove. The medial head from the posterior surface of the humerus inferior to the radial groove. And the long head from the infraglenoid tubercle. The muscle as a whole 
and sat on the olive cranium of the ulna and is inverted by the radial nerve. This triceps brachial muscle is the arm extensor muscle at the elbow joint. On fan also on this compartment is a small triangular muscle, the anconius. Uh, the origin of this anconius muscle is a lateral epiconda and it inserts on the posterior surface of the ulna. Its nerve supply is the radial nerve C7, C8 and T1. The action of this muscle is just to stabilize the elbow. Next section of the arm, we are going to be looking at the artery. The main artery of the arm is the brachial artery. Brachial artery begins at the inferior border of the teres major muscle, giving off branches posteriorly the profunda brachial artery, laterally the humeral nutrient artery, passing through the humeral canal, and anteromedially the superior and inferior ulnar collateral arteries. This brachial artery ends in the cubital fossa, where it divides into the radial and ulnar arteries. There are two sets of veins, the superficial veins, which are the cephalic and the basilic veins. Both arise from the dorsal venous network of the arm. Basilic vein ascends in the medial aspect of the arm, whereas the cephalic vein ascends in the anterior lateral aspect of the arm, the deep vein. By union of ulnar and radial veins, the brachial vein begins at the elbow and ends by merging with the basilic to form the axillary vein. Lastly, we are going to be looking at the nerve supply of this arm region. Having the word map, M-A-R-P, well, whatever that means in real sense. M stands for musculocutaneous nerve, supplying muscles on the anterior compartment, while R stands for radial nerve, supplying muscles on the posterior compartment. The other nerves, which are median and ulnar nerves, just transit through the arm to supply the areas in the forearm region. In relation to the humerus, the radial nerve passes inferior laterally around the radial groove. The ulnar nerve passes posterior to the medial epicondyle and medial to the olecranoid. 